Well, greetings, Mr. Colazar's class. What we're going to start looking into for section 10.4 is it's going to be broken into two parts. Our first part is going to be on the empirical formulas, and our second part is going to be on molecular formulas. So as we're going, our objectives are going to be to calculate percent composition that will be covered in the first video along with empirical formulas and then our second video it's going to be on molecular formulas uh, both of them found from mass percents and actual mass from data so as we're going our first part is going to be to look at what's called percent composition percent composition is percent by mass of each element in a compound so percent by mass would be the mass of the element divided by the mass of the compound and since we're dealing in percents the formula would be times a hundred so it's going to be what part of each element makes up the total so for percent composition there's two ways we can go about percent composition so if we're given the formula let's say C6H12O6 mass of the element divided by the mass of the compound we first need to find the molecular mass. So the molecular mass or the total mass of the compound is what we need to find. So first off we have mass of the carbon from our periodic table, mass of hydrogen, mass of oxygen multiplied by the number of each element, six carbons, twelve hydrogens, six oxygens, and as we're going those would all be multiplied out and we would find that total mass so the total mass of our compound C6H12O6 or glucose would be the mass of the compound now once we have the mass of the compound we can use that to find the mass of each element this is how much we got from carbon this is how much we got from hydrogen's mass and this is how much we got from oxygen's mass if we take each of those and divide them by the total mass of the compound we can find out times a hundred for our percent we can find out the approximate mass percentage of each of our elements so the mass of carbon the mass of hydrogen and the mass of oxygen the percentages of them would be found over here then saying that from C6H12O6 39.9% would be carbon 6.73% of that's hydrogen 53.28% of that is oxygen and that's by its mass so percent by mass now a second way to do that would be if you were actually experimentally given as a reaction went on and from the experiment 39 or 3.99 grams of copper and 1.01 grams of sulfur actually chemically combined now notice that both of these are already in mass so if they're both already in mass we're given the fact that it already has 5 grams of total mass so mass of the element divided by the mass of the compound would give us our percent mass once we multiplied by 100. So if we already have our total mass of 5, we would divide each of them by that 5 grams of total mass, multiplied by 100, and when they work out, 79.8% would be copper approximately, and 20.2% of that compound would be sulfur. So two ways to determine the percent composition either given the chemical formula or given the experimental masses of each and then it'd be the mass of the part divided by the mass of the whole now two terms we're going to be looking at are empirical formula and molecular formula and we'll need to know both of these so molecular formula the actual chemical formula of the substance and the empirical formula smallest whole number ratio of each of the elements so we've got three chemicals here formaldehyde acetic acid and glucose now formaldehyde CH2O acetic acid is the active ingredient in vinegar C4 or C2H4O2 
Now if you notice, we've got a 2, 4, 2 here. And glucose, uh, one of our sugars, our simple sugars, C6H12O6. Now, with formaldehyde, there's one carbon here, two ox or two hydrogens and one oxygen. It's in its lowest common denominators. Acetic acid, C2H4O2, however, could be reduced if we were to divide it all by 2. And C6H12O6, lowest common denom denominator between these three, if you were to divide each one by 6, you could reduce them down. So the empirical formula, the smallest whole number ratio between them, not the actual, that'd be molecular, the empirical formula then, you can't reduce down C2 or CH2O any further, but when acetic acid's reduced down, CH2O, and glucose when it's reduced down, CH2O. So all three of these have the same empirical formula and different molecular formulas. Now what we're going to be looking at first off is we'll need to solve for empirical formulas first, but then there's going to be some way, next step, to figure out how we get to the molecular formula. So as we're going, we're going to start with solving for empirical formula first, and then we're going to move to molecular formula second will be a part two to this. So that's what we're going to see in video two is how to get to molecular formula. So we'll start out first off on calculating the empirical formula of our substances. Now to do this empirical formula, on your page there's a little box, middle of the page there, we'll make mine look similar there, and it's got four steps that we're going to follow. So our four steps to go from percent composition to mass, two to go from mass to moles, three, three is going to be that we're going to go from the percent, or excuse me, three divide by the smallest whole number, and four we're going to multiply to obtain whole numbers if we need to do that. So our problem says that for chemical analysis of a clear liquid, it shows that 60% of it's carbon, 13% is hydrogen, and 26.6% is oxygen. So from our clear liquid, we'd have 60% carbon, 13% hydrogen, and 26% oxygen. Now in a 100 gram sample, what we're going to look at is, we're going to assume we have a 100 gram sample. Because if we assume we have a 100 gram sample, if 60% is carbon, 13% hydrogen, 26% oxygen, we can assume that the percent would turn right to a gram. So if you assume you have a 100 gram sample from the percentages, that will equal the amount you have in grams. So our first step has been completed, percent composition to mass. Now our second step is we need to go from mass to moles. So our second step is we're working mass to moles. Starting out we have 60.0 grams of carbon 13.4 grams of hydrogen, 26.6 grams of oxygen is what we assumed. Using your periodic table, one mole of carbon to 12 grams. Mole is on top so that grams can cancel from our periodic table. Thirteen point four grams of hydrogen. One mole of hydrogen over one point oh one grams of hydrogen and 26.6 grams of oxygen over one mole equals 16 uh, times 16 grams of oxygen over the one mole. Grams cancel grams. So now we are left with moles of each of our substance. Five moles of carbon, 
13.27 moles of hydrogen, 1.66 moles of oxygen. Now at this point, our next step says that we're going to divide by the smallest mole. So we have 5, 13.27, 1.66. 1.66 is the smallest mole number. So we're going to divide each one by 1.66. Now when we divide each one by 1.66, it turns out that we have 3.01 moles of carbon, 7.99 moles of hydrogen, and 1.00 moles of oxygen. Now rounding wise, we can see that this is close enough to the number 3. This is close enough to the number 8. and this one is right at one. Now, rounding wise, since uh, we have all those decimal numbers with our elements to begin with, we'll be very close to being on. Now, if this turns out to be like 0.25 or 0.5 or 0.33, could be a possibility, then that's when step four would need to take place. If the smallest whole numbers, or if the smallest numbers aren't whole, then we'd have to multiply by a number to get them to a whole number ratio. We'll see that later on. But since they are three carbons, eight hydrogens, one oxygen, so our empirical formula for this compound is C3H8O. For our second strategy on calculating empirical formula, we have experimentally seen this problem a little bit earlier we have 3.9 grams of copper reacting with one gram of sulfur to produce copper either one or copper two sulfide so we have to decide which one we actually have determine the empirical formula uh, to determine which copper compound we actually produced so right now 3.99 grams of copper 1.01 uh, grams of sulfur so right away our first step is to go from grams to moles using your periodic table we can go from grams to moles once we're in our grams to moles we can notice we have our moles 0 0.0629 moles of copper 0 0.03515 moles of sulfur now once we're in moles our next step was to divide by the smallest mole ratio in this case, 0 0.035 is our smallest number, mole ratio wise. So dividing by mole by mole, we'll notice right now that we have 1.99 moles of copper and 0.1 moles of sulfur. So at this point, what we need to do is, writing out our formula, 1.99, close enough, right at two. So two coppers, one mole sulfur, to one mole of sulfur. So as we're going, in order for this chemical to work out, if we were kind of split by our first element, sulfur is always a minus two. If we have two coppers, copper must be a plus one in order for us to balance out. So what do we have for a chemical formula? Is it copper one or copper two sulfite or sulfide? It's copper one sulfide, Cu with a plus one, Cu2S, copper one sulfide would be our chemical formula there. Our next step will be to work on molecular formulas. So we're going to stop here, and then you'll pick back up with molecular formulas in the next video.